Hey, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our bleeding and coagulation discussion. Today, we'll talk about factor 13, deficiency. In the previous video, we have talked about factor 12, deficiency, which was weird because the PTT was so prolonged, yet the patient was so asymptomatic. But now, this is kind of the opposite. The patient is not asymptomatic. In fact, the patient is suffering from severe bleeding. However, the PTT is absolutely not normal because factor 13 is not in the intrinsic pathway. And like most of the rare inherited coagulation disorders, factor 13 deficiency is autosomal recessive, hashtag consanguinity. Where is the problem in factor 13 deficiency? It's here, baby, in the coagulation factor, specifically factor 13. What was the function of factor 13? To stabilize the unstable fibrin into stable, strong, cross-linked fibrin fibers. And without factor 13, you'll simply form a clot, and then without stabilization, the clot will get dissolved very quickly and you'll bleed maybe to death. Where's the problem in factor 13 deficiency? It's in the secondary hemostasis. So how about the PT and PTT? Both of them are normal. Oh, oh, I, I, I cannot believe you. Because the problem here is factor 13. Factor 13 happens after the coagulation cascade. It's the last step when everything is said and done. So PT will be normal because the extrinsic pathway is normal. PTT will be normal because the intrinsic pathway is normal. Even TT could be normal because the common pathway is normal. However, now we cannot stay Stabilize the fibrin, so it's not going to show up using these naive lab tests. Does factor 13 deficiency involve primary hemostasis? No, so we don't care about this slide right now. Is factor 13 concerned with the secondary hemostasis? Yeah, absolutely, it's here, baby, factor 13, stabilizing the fibrin into stable fibrin fibers. And this process is called cross-linking. We need factor 13A for active and ionized charged calcium. And that's why factor 13 is called the fibrin stabilizing factor. And factor 13 deficiency is an autosomal recessive disease, hashtag consanguinity, especially Iranians. Factor 13 deficiency, we have a problem in secondary hemostasis. Please remember late rebleeding. Again, late, because factor 13 happens later after all of the previous factors have worked. Okay, symptoms of secondary hemostasis defects such as factor 13 deficiency. We have deep bleeding, late rebleeding, late, please, after surgery, after tooth extraction, and after circumcision, hemarthrosis, deep muscle bleeding, retroperitoneal bleeding intracranial bleeding and in neonates there's bleeding after umbilical cord separation or after circumcision again late severe re-bleeding after surgery we have a pharmacology marathon on my facebook page please come and join us hemophilia a and b they were x-linked recessive all the others are autosomal recessive hashtag consanguinity you can get a 25% discount toward my antibiotics course. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com and use the promo code antibiotics25. Factor 13 deficiency is autosomal recessive, therefore consanguinity, therefore a certain group or population. In this case, it's Iranians. But Iran is a big, humongous country. This is not consanguineous enough, specifically South Eastern Iran. This is why consanguinity is related to autosomal recessive diseases. This is the function of the fibrin stabilizing factor or factor 13, cross-linking of the labile fibrin fibers into stable, strong fibrin fibers, and we need some calcium for that. Factor 13 deficiency, etiology congenital, it's inherited, it's hereditary, it's autosomal recessive, therefore consanguinity, therefore southeastern Iran. Pathophysiology, there is decreased factor 13 activity, and therefore clinically, factor 13 is very important for stabilizing the fibrin fibers, otherwise all of the previous steps are worthless. So clinically speaking, there is severe, late, post-surgical bleeding, there is decreased wound healing. Yeah, because for wound healing, first we need primary hemostasis, thank you platelets, and then secondary hemostasis, thank you coagulation factors, and then fibrinolysis, and then regeneration and repair. If there is no secondary hemostasis, there is no regeneration or repair, and that's why there is delayed wound healing. There is severe bleeding, and there is, of course, deep anatomical bleeding. Plated count and bleeding time are normal because primary hemostasis is fine. PT, PTT, and TTT are normal because factor 13 deficiency happens after the coagulation cascade, so they will be fine. 
And factor 13 activity will be low. Factor 13 level, if its deficiency is going to be low. If it's an inhibitor or an antibody, it's going to be normal. How do we tell the difference? Do a mixing study. Moreover, if you want to diagnose factor 13 deficiency, we use something called the specialized clot lysis assay. Basically, we're trying to destroy your clot by adding urea. Urea should destroy your clot only if your clot is weak. So if the clot gets destroyed, this is a positive test you have factor 13 deficiency. But if the clot is strong because you have good and robust factor 13, your clot will not get dissolved and you will have a negative test. Negative means normal. The freaking hospital is the only place where positive is a bad thing. How do we treat patients with factor 13 deficiency? If the patient lacks factor 13, give the patient factor 13. I don't have it. Give the thing that contains all the factors. It's called fresh frozen plasma. If you remember factor 12 deficiency, we had no symptoms. However, the PTT was so prolonged. Factor 13 is the opposite. We have severe symptoms, yet PTT is absolutely normal. In fact, all of them are normal. The only way to diagnose it is either to measure the factor 13 activity or to do a specialized clot lysis assay using urea. Question number 30. What bleeding disorders, whether they are primary or secondary hemostasis defects, can have normal plate count, normal bleeding time, and normal PT, and even normal PTT? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the correct answers in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course and use the promo code antibiotics25 to get a 25% discount. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.